so thanks everyone for joining us. Um, this is the, the Computational Sustainability Open Graduate Seminar. Um, and for anyone who's joining us new here, um, this is a roughly bi-weekly seminar series that provides a forum for graduate students who are working in computational sustainability to disseminate their work and share about their experiences and research. Uh, so it's organized by myself, Ryan Wilder, and uh, Sebastian Ament, Nirma Delatnia, Priya Danti, Amrita Gupta, Neil Jean, and Kevin Winner. And so our speaker for today is Haifeng Xu, who's a student at USC, where he's advised by Milan Tambe and Shadon Dukmi. So Haifeng's research uh, focuses on artificial intelligence, computational game theory, algorithms, and applied machine learning. And so he has um, what I think is a fairly unique research style where he has um, both very theoretically grounded algorithms and also um, a lot of um, sort of very practical application work. And so for, for all of this research, Haifeng has received numerous awards and fellowships, including the 2017 Google PhD Fellowship, the 2017 USC, USC CAMS Prize for Excellence in Research, the 2016 AMAS Best Student Paper Award, and the 2016 SECMAS Workshop Best Paper Award. And so with that, um, I'll turn it over to Haifeng. Thank you, Brian. Uh, so I would like to start by thank you, uh, thank you for uh, organizing this workshop. I think it's really helpful for graduates, and I wish that uh, I was younger so that I can participate more with it. Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, uh, so I'm a fifth year PhD student at USC. Uh, today I'm going to talk about um, uh, uh, one paper that we published at IIII 18. The title is uh, uh, Oh, maybe does does anyone hear me? Uh, does everyone hear me? Good. Okay, good. Yeah, so uh, the title of my talk is uh, Strategic Coordination of Human Patrollers and Mobile Sensors with Signaling for Security Games. So, uh, okay, let me start with. Uh, okay. Okay, good. So, let me start with a little bit of um, uh, motivations. So, <clears throat> In the past decade, there has been uh, a lot of work in using game theory for uh, security. Uh, this is what uh, people typically typically call security games. So this is basically a two-player game played between a defender and an attacker. So uh, the defender's goal is to kind of opt uh, optimally allocate some limited number of security resources to protect the important ta targets from the attacker's attack, and uh, the attacker is going to strategically respond to the defender's strategy and figure out his coverage of targeted to attack. And this is naturally captured by a game theoretic framework. And this framework has been uh, seen many uh, important applications which have been deployed in the real world. For example, this leads to uh, this uh, model has been used to protect the airports in Los Angeles and to protect uh, to schedule air marshals to protect flights across the US and protect the ports and of course wildlife conservation, which, uh, which is gonna be a, a major motivation of this work. And uh, if you look at all these uh, previous works, um, so what are the security resources in, in all these uh, papers, uh, in, in all these models? Well, in the, in the uh, airport protection, the resources usually are policemen. And in the, uh, to protect the flights, we usually use scheduled air marshals to protect flights or we use ship patrollers to protect uh, uh, ports and uh, uh, ferries. And uh, we uh, use rangers to patrol uh, and uh, protect the wildlife. And a common property across all these, uh, uh, all these uh, resources is that they are all human patrollers, right? So they, they kind of, they are human patrollers. And recently there has been a, Recently, there has been a rapidly growing trend in using UAVs for, uh, for, uh, for security. Uh, a, a, major, a, a major motivating domain of this is actually wildlife conservation. And actually, there were some particular uh, nonprofit programs which focus particularly on flying UAV for conservation. For example, Air Shepherd is one of them. And uh, some of my uh, lab mates actually are collaborating with them to uh, Im improve the petroleum UAVs. And uh, so this work trying to look at how to kind of strategically coordinate human patrollers and mobile sensors like UAVs. So maybe the first question you have is, uh, uh, what is the difference between these two types of resources, patrollers and sensors? Why I cannot just merge them together as one 
team or controller and schedule them, just uh, um, regard, treat them as the same types of resources. Well, it turns out that there actually uh, there are key differences between these two types of uh, resources. In particular, the controllers has the deterrence functionality. In particular, the controllers can directly interdict the attack. For example, if a ranger sees some uh, poachers, he can directly interdict the poaching. But the sensors cannot directly interdict the attack. The sensors only have the monitoring functionality. That is, they can de detect attacks and possibly notify some rangers who are close by to come to catch the poacher. So that's the monitoring functionality. And on the other hand, the sensor can also send some uh, signal to alert the patroller. That's the only thing they can do. It cannot stop the, uh, stop the poaching, but it can alert the poacher. So this is the kind of what we call alerting functionality. And you can see that these, types, these two types of resources have really different uh, functionalities. And on the other hand, patrollers really has are more, uh, are more kind of costly because you need to pay labor fees, but sensors are really more cost effective because you just, it's kind of one-time payment and plus some uh, 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 managing costs. So, uh, so that's kind of the difference. And then the contribution of this work is we're trying to uh, pr we propose a novel security game model that integrates patrollers deterrence functionality and the sensors monitoring and alerting functionality. And we, uh, we uh, syst systematically study the computational complexity of this model and the develop efficient algorithm to solve the model. Uh, in particular, I'm going to show you that the, pro the model is actually MP hard to solve and uh, we're going to propose a scalable algorithm based on uh, approximation. Uh, so that's kind of the high level uh, contribution of the paper. Uh, this is the outline for the rest of the talk. So I'm so the main part of the talk gonna be a illustrative example where I'm gonna uh, show you all the main ideas about the model, and uh, then I will talk. I will formally define the model and describe the algorithms and some experimental results. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me start with the illustrative example. So as I said, so this uh, is primarily motivated by um, wildlife conservation. So let's consider the problem of protecting the border of a national park, let's say, and assume that the defender only have one security resources, which is, uh, which is one ranger, let's say, and the ranger can, pr can protect only one target. And this border of the area is discretized into eight uh, cells. So this is kind of uh, what we typically do in a security games domain. We kind of discard the area and try to uh, patrol each cell. And the uh, attacker, there's one attacker who wants to choose one target to attack. So that's the game. It's very, it's very, very simple. One, one patroller, one attacker. And I can abstract this game a little bit to be kind of a game played on a cycle graph with, uh, with eight nodes here on a cycle graph. And uh, there's one security resources. And for, for convenience, I'm going to assume that all these targets are kind of equally or these targets are equally important. And uh, if the attacker attacks any target, then it depends on whether it's protected or unprotected, the defender or the attacker are gonna get a reward or a cost. It's kind of just uh, some standard uh, utility value for the sale. And you, you don't need to pay uh, particular attention to these numbers here. And so one very natural question in security game is uh, to look at uh, what is the optimal defender strategy in this case. Uh, so, okay, now in this problem, because the problem is very easy, I, this eight targets basically are completely symmetric and not, no, no target is special. So you could imagine that the optimal strategy is, in this case, is just to patrol a target uni choosing uniformly at random, right? Note that you don't want to deterministically protect any single target because in that case, the, uh, the, uh, the poacher are gonna figure out the target you are protecting and then attack some other targets. So you want to randomize. And because the targets are, 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 uh, targets are symmetric, so you're going to choose one uniform at random. So in this case, you can see that each target will be protected with a probability one over eight because there were eight targets. And uh, then you can uh, compute the, uh, the attack. The attacker is going to choose one target to choose any target to attack because it's the same to him. And in this case, the expected defender utility is going to be uh, one over eight times the uh, the for the defender reward and the seven over eight for the case of with the cost. So this is kind of the expected utility, negative seventeen over four. 
Is this clear to everyone? Okay, good. Okay, so this is good, very simple. And now the question we look at is what if the, uh, the defender additionally have four UAVs? Right. In this case, how? So it turns out in this case, different uh, different situations may happen. For example, if the attacker attacks a target where the patroller is located, then the attacker will be caught immediately because the patroller is there. And then, otherwise, if the attacker attacks a target where nothing is there, he, neither the patroller nor a UAV is there, then he can successfully he, he can successfully conduct the attack. And well, if the attacker attacks a cell with a UAV there, now different things may ha So he has two options now. Either he can choose to run away because he can really see a UAV kind of from far, far away and make a decision about whether run away or continue the attack. If he run away, uh, if he run away, then both players just get a zero and nothing happens. That's good. And if he doesn't run away, he decides to attack, then depends on the situation. If there is a if the ranger is at a neighbor of this target then he will be caught because the uav is going to notify the ranger at the neighbor node to come to catch the poacher okay and uh, otherwise if if not neither of the neighbors have the patroller then he can successfully conduct the attack in this case even though the uav can notify some rangers but the ranger may not have enough time to come to, uh, because he needs to travel along the along the border, and but it might not there might not be enough time to catch the poacher. Okay, so uh, in other words, the whether it were whether the attack will succeed or not depends on whether there is a ranger at the neighbor or not. Okay, so so that's kind of that's kind of defines the game. Then the question we ask is in this in this case, what is optimal defender strategy? Uh, so. With some thoughts, you can see that these targets are still kind of symmetric. There's, none of them is special. So you can, uh, it, it's not difficult to show that in this case, the optimal strategy turns out to be the follows. The patroller will be placed uniformly at random over this graph. So this kind of, this red dot is for, to put the only patroller. And you can choose this dot uniformly at random here. And then you put the four UAVs around this patroller. The intuition is that you want the UAV to be close to the patroller because if the UAV is far away, it, does, it doesn't function well because he not, cannot uh, ask the patrol to come, uh, to, to come. And you can, it, it turns out that you can show that this, can, this is actually the optimal strategy in this case. And now what is the optimal defender? Uh, what, is, uh, what is the defender utility? Well, let's do some calculation here. Um, so first I claim that in this case, any, put, any cell will be covered by a patroller with probably one over eight because this red node is choosing uniform at random, right? And the UAV, uh, a cell will be covered by a UAV with probably four over eight because there are four UAVs here and uh, they are kind of, they are also chosen kind of, depends on the randomness of this central red node, right? And otherwise a cell is not protected. This happens with probably th uh, three over eight. And now, the important thing to notice here is that when given that a cell is covered by a UAV, uh, the probability that there is a patroller at its neighbor is half, and otherwise there is no patroller. This is because for these two cells, uh, the patroller is close by, and for these two cells, there is no patroller nearby. Right, so it's kind of half-half. Good, okay. So now I can calculate the attacker's response. So now as if the attacker sees the UAV, will he choose to attack or not? Well, we can calculate the expected utility. So he sees the UAV half the chance it's, uh, there is a patroller he has a cost and half the chance that he has a reward. It turns out that this is greater than zero. That is the utility of not attacking. So in this case, record that is zero. Zero is a utility of not attacking. So in this case, the, the attacker actually prefer to attack. And this kind of result in, uh, result in expected defender utility uh, with this term, which is half times the defender uh, reward and half uh, of the cost here. OK? And uh, well, this is only for the situation that the UAV is around, and you want to you want to kind of take the expectation over all the situations, which turns out to be uh, this term. You don't need to pay attention to these numbers, but it turns out that this is kind of negative eleven over four, which is greater than negative seventeen over four, which is a previous utility without using UAVs. 
right? So this calculation basically conveys one message. That is, uh, the sensors do help, even though they cannot directly interdict the tax, because you can use it to improve the utility here, right? So, okay, this is good. And then the next, a more interesting question to ask is, can we do something even better than the previous uh, negative 11 over four? And the answer turns out to be yes. And the idea is to kind of use the defender's informational advantage to deceive the poacher. And such improvement is possible when the attacker visits a target that is uh, covered by a UAV now. And at this point, the uh, defender knows that, knows precisely whether there is a ranger close by or not. But the attacker only knows that there is a probability a, a ranger is, is close by is half and half. So in other words, uh, the defender has more knowledge about uh, this uh, situation. And I'm gonna show you that the defender can utilize this information advantage to deceive the poacher and improve the security. Okay? And uh, so here's what, what, uh, here's what we can do. So when, so when, the, uh, when the cell is covered by a UAV, half of the time there's a patroller nearby and in this case, I'm gonna ask the patroller to send an alerting signal. Okay, you, can, you could imagine the, the UAV gonna flash a light at the sky or making some noise at the sky. So if there's a patroller nearby, I'm gonna always do this. And half of the time, there's no patroller nearby, but nevertheless, uh, four over, so kinda is 80% of the time, I'm still gonna send an alerting signal, right? And otherwise I do not, I just keep silent. And now from the poacher's perspective, if he sees an alerting signal, what does that mean? Well, he knows that this is not for sure that some patroller is nearby because he knows that I'm, I'm kind of deceptive a little bit. But after some base updates, he can infer that the conditional probability the patroller is nearby is actually five over nine because this is 5.5, this is 0.4, okay? And it turns out that if you plug in this uh, probability, the expected utility of attacking now is actually strictly less than zero. Record that, that previous is half half probability of a ranger nearby. Now I, now I kind of uh, manipulated the attacker's belief a little bit to make it a five over nine. And this kind of allows me to deter the attacker's attack. And therefore, in this case, the attacker will not attack and the defender get utility zero. Okay, and otherwise, if there's an uh, if if I keep silent, then the uh, attacker basically know that there's a no patroller nearby. He gonna then he gonna continue to attack, and the defender will suffer a cost. But fortunately, this happens with probability only 0.1 now, here. Okay, so I kind of deterred the I kind of reduced the probability of poachers attacking to probably 0.1. Okay. So this shows a mechanism that how I can utilize information advantage to deceive the attacker and deter the attacking, uh, deter his attack. Uh, so here are some remarks. Uh, so in this case, the expected utility is gonna be, uh, in, in conditional on this case, the expected defender utility is negative 0.5 uh, because this 0.5 happens with the probability 0.1. And previously, this utility actually is negative four, uh, ne negative two. So I have so I improved the defender's utility in this particular situation. Uh, so any, oh, I guess I'm not sure whether I can people can ask questions here, but uh, so I hope this is so I hope this is clear to everyone. This is kind of really the key part of this model. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. And that is, so you keep saying that we shouldn't pay attention to the particular numbers that are in this model, but don't they end up uh, impacting uh, the results, you know, um, in such a way that you determine the result by these numbers. Uh, so basically, here's a so here's the thing. So basically, for whatever utility structure, uh, you can kind of come up with the mechanism that increase your utility. But this improvement could be large or small, and I'm going to show that how much you can improve in general, in general, generally in the, in the experiment. I see. Um, and if you, maybe you, you're going to get to this, uh, but I'm just wondering now, um, if you apply this in the real world, then you do need to choose these utility values, right? Uh, yeah. And how would you do that? Uh, so I think usually you can, 
I think what we do is we, we ask the experts about this value, like ask their estimation about what is the defender's cost of losing, uh, losing, uh, you know, didn't attack, and what is the attack cost of being caught and things like this. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, but the goal, but the goal of this work is to develop a model that works for any any utility structure, whatever utility structure they give to us. Good. Okay. Good. And here, here are uh, here are two kind of remarks. Uh, let me do this. So the first is that uh, noted that here we can we can deter the attacker even though the attacker is aware of the deception. In particular, in this situation, even though the attacker knows that uh, the patroller may not come, but he's is is still his best response uh, is still over his interest to kind of not attack. Okay. And uh, on the other hand, I want to mention that this would not work if you always send the alert signal. Because if you always alert, the attacker know that you're just always doing this, and they're going to behave according to their prior belief. Where, uh, in, and in that case, it's kind of half chance that a patroller is nearby, and they're going to prefer to continue to attack. So you really need to kind of tune the probabilities properly so that it's kind of just enough to deter the attack. Uh, okay, so that's kind of the e example. Uh, let me see. And next, I'm gonna briefly talk about kind of formalize this a little bit in, in in a mathematical model. And really, it's kind of just an abstraction of the previous model uh, of the previous example. So I'm gonna call this a sensor empowered security game or stake model. And uh, in in this game, there is one defender and one attacker, and there are n targets whose geographic structure is captured by a graph. So for example, like this graph here, and this edge is gonna tell you like from one, uh, from one area, whether you can traverse to another area. If there is an edge there, you can traverse there. And uh, every node here is basically a target or is a cell in this, in this, uh, in this, uh, in the, in the area. And, uh, so I have K patrollers and, and visible sensors. They, I don't assume there's scheduling constraint. I can put this uh, patroller and the sensors actually on the graph. So in this case, you can see that I put uh, three patrollers, which is the three red nodes, and uh, I, have M, uh, I have six uh, uh, sensors, which are these pink nodes, the location of these pink nodes, okay? And uh, then the patrollers can directly interdict the attacks, as I mentioned before, and uh, the sensors have two functionalities. They can notify a nearby patroller. They can, uh, they can monitor the area and they notify a nearby the patroller. And also they can send signals. Uh, note that sensor cannot directly interdict the attacks. And uh, uh, so there are some utility structure for the game, depends on uh, whether it's, the defense is successful or if it's a failure uh, for both the defender attacker. And the defender strategy is the defender gonna commit to some randomized resource allocation strategy, plus a signaling scheme, which is just as I described before. Uh, the, which is the signaling scheme is for the sensors. The sensor gonna use a signaling scheme to kind of reveal deceptive information about the presence of some nearby patrollers, right? If you recall, this is kind of what we did previously. Oh, sorry, there's some this is kind of some math notation I shouldn't have. So basically, kind of strategically reveal the information about whether there is a ranger close by or not. And that's for the defender. And the attacker, basically, his strategy is he's going to choose one target to visit and then decide to, if he sees a signal there, he will decide to attack or not. And if there's, if there's no signal there, he's going to just continue to attack, just attack. And uh, the, so after seeing the signal, the attacker gonna does a base update about a belief in. So this, uh, I'm not gonna detail, mention these details here. So this is how the attacker really updates his belief. Um, so you mean, I mean, after seeing the signal and he can update the probability of patrol or not. So that's a model. And uh, so, and I'm, uh, I'm assuming the attacker is perfectly rational. He's gonna best respond to it at, at each stage. Um, so my goal is to compute the defender's optimal uh, strategy to, uh, to commit to, uh, by which I mean the randomized resource allocation plus the signaling scheme. Uh, so that's the model. And uh, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the al uh, algorithm for solving the model. Uh, the first result we have is that we kind of show that computing the optimal commitment is actually MP hard, even in zero sum uh, sex. 
so I'm gonna give you a brief uh, sketch about the proof. So basically our idea is to reduce from the dominant set problem. Uh, so what is the dominant set problem? Here's a, the, here's a description. So basically you have a graph and uh, a set D is a dominant set if any node in the graph either belongs to D or is adjacent to some node in D, right? Uh, so for example, here's a, this, the red node here is actually a dominant set of this graph because every node here either is a red node or is adjacent to a red node. You can easily check, for example, this uh, is adjacent to this red node, and this node is adjacent to this red node. And you can check all of them. So then this uh, red node consist, cons, uh, forms a dominant set. Okay? Uh, so, and the dominant set problem is to try to find the smallest uh, dominant set. So the set that is as small as possible. And so, uh, now consider our problem. So I'm gonna consider a situation where a defender has only K patrollers, but sufficiently many sensors. He can have as many sensors as he wants. And now I ask, what is the optimal defender strategy in this case? And I claim that the defender would wish to place these K patrollers to a dominant set of the size K, uh, to a dominant set of size K. That's why I'm actually using red color here and also red color here because this red color, this red nodes are for patrollers. Why, why the defender want to place the patroller on the dominant set? Well, this is because um, if I, put, I can uh, put care patroller on the dominant set, I can protect all the targets. Because the cell either is uh, covered by a patroller, which is the dominant, dominant set, or is uh, covered by a sensor, which by definition gonna be close to a, a patroller. Right. Record that if a sensor has a patroller close by, then the sensor can successfully mm, can does the functionality because he can function well because he can ask the uh, patroller nearby to come to catch the patrol, uh, catch the poacher. Uh, okay. So this basically so formally the claim is that the graph has a dominant set of size k if and only if the defender can perfectly protect every target. And that, that proved the theorem. Uh, because of this, so then there's no hope to find a polynomial time algorithm in general due to the MP hardness. And in the paper, we kind of developed the scalable algorithm for solving the general sum version of this game using a branch and a price technique. Uh, so I'm not gonna detail things here, but uh, basically there were two important, two main parts of this algorithm. The first is a normal relaxation for the problem for pruning these LPs. And it's the second is a provably a constant approximation for solving the so-called slave problem. But uh, I'm not gonna mention the details here. So these are some, uh, here are some exp uh, experimental results uh, for the game. So uh, this returns back to the question the audience was asking. So how much uh, really I can gain by using uh, sensors? So this is uh, precisely what we, we try to test. In, in this uh, figure, the setting is that the defender has a budget of seven, let's say seven dollars. And uh, he, can, he, can acquire, he can buy a patroller with one dollar. I mean, this is just a made, a made up number. It's, it's not seven dollars, there's seven units of money, let's say. The, he can buy a patroller with one unit of money. And he can buy a sensor with one over R unit of money. You can think of R as some like three or four. It's kind of a uh, sensor is less costly than a patroller, okay? And I want to see, uh, so for example, I choose the ratio R to be three, five, or seven. That means you can use the, the uh, budget for one patroller to get uh, three sensors or five sensors. And I, I look at the, so um, I look at, uh, so how many sensors I should have, how many patrollers I should have uh, to get the best defender utility. And you can see that it's, so this, the figure here, the XX is the number of patrollers I have. The rest of the budget is gonna be used to, uh, to get the sensors. And you can see that it's not good to kinda, or have all of them to be patrollers, which is this case, and neither good to have all of them to be uh, sensors, where you, don't, you have only one patroller. So it's something at the begin, at the middle, where it's the best for you. So you want to form a proper team of patrollers and sensors. That are gonna give you the best defender utility here. Okay, and uh, so this, this kind of show that uh, it uh, showed that you want to kind of form a proper team between patrollers and sensors. 
And this is kind of the utility comparison in some uh, random generated game. And I, the, in this case, I'm comparing different uh, game models. So the, this, uh, the, the up line is the, the model I proposed. And this middle line is a model I proposed about without this uh, signaling process. It only uses the mobile sensor, but do not send, send deceptive signaling. And the bottom line is the setting with, without using sensors. I use all the budget to buy controllers. So you can see that this gap shows that how much you can gain by using signaling. Because this basically, it's the same game. I'm just uh, one of them does not have the, have the signaling component. And this gap shows that how much you can gain by using sensors. Uh, okay. So, so summarize. Yeah, sure. And that is, so what's this correlation in this case? Pardon me? Oh, uh, sorry, this, oh yeah, good, good question. This, uh, this is kind of randomly generated game. And we use a correlation to, uh, is a parameter to control the correlation between, between the defender's health structure and the attacker's health structure. So if the correlation is a negative one, that means they are kind of the opposite of each other. Then the game is zero sum. And uh, if the correlation is zero, which means there's no correlation, then that means their utility structure are, are kind of in, independent and uh, randomly drawn. Independent and uh, randomly drawn. Mm -hmm. So this kind of shows you how much correlation between uh, the defender and attacker's utility health structures. Good. Uh, so that's that. So, uh, so to summarize, Price, uh, I described the sensor-empowered security game model, which is motivated by the recent trend of using UAVs for wildlife conservation. And uh, I talked about how to integrate, uh, in, incorporating sensors functionalities like monitoring and signaling. And on the algorithmic side, I uh, discussed the, the computational complexity of the model and also efficient some uh, algorithms. And uh, for open questions, uh, I think the first the main open question is that in my setting, the sensors do not fly. I'm just putting the sensor just on the node. And the patrollers do not move neither. I'm just putting the patroller on some node. But in practice, the sensor would kind of fly on the sky and have some uh, need to follow some path. And the patroller is also following some path. So I think one interesting future question is to integrate the path, uh, patrol path planning into the problem. And the, probably there are some scheduling constraints in the problem as well. And because the problem is already proven to be hard, I would imagine this would uh, just, uh, the computationally, this would be uh, even more difficult to handle. And, uh, and second, so I talked about using signaling to deceive the uh, um, poacher, but the signaling, the way I'm describing is just one particular model of deception. And there, were, there is a very rich literature of, of deception. And uh, I'm wondering whether you can kind of use some other ways to deceive the poacher and integrate that, uh, uh, that part into the model. So for example, you can use a plan clothes, please, uh, plan clothes uh, rangers as well, for example. Uh, and third is uh, how to integrate other functionalities of the UAVs. I only talked about the UAV can monitoring and uh, signaling, but sometimes some UAVs also have some laser points or smoke bombs. And the question is how to integrate these functionalities into the game uh, to further improve the security. And uh, that's it, I think. Um, thank you.